Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, post lunch session of the symposium. So we'll be starting the third session of the symposium now, and uh, there will be again three talks uh, in this session. So our first speaker will be Dr. Meng Chao from University of Groningen. The second speaker will be Dr. Kale Johansson from KTH. And the third speaker will be uh, Dr. Shubhrakanti Dev from uh, University of Ireland. So we'll have the same format. Uh, so basically, the uh, once the talk is going on, you can type your questions in the question box. And once the talk is over, uh, I'll take the questions one by one. So my name is Vabhav Kateva, and I am an assistant professor at the Robert Boss Center for Cyberphysical Systems. So I'll be hosting this uh, session as well. So we had a very interesting first uh, two sessions in the morning. And coincidentally, the first session, all the speakers were based in US. And in the second session, all the speakers were, were based in All the speakers are based in Europe. So it's a nice coincidence that we are switching from one continent to another. Uh, OK, so let's start with uh, the, the next talk. So our next speaker is uh, Dr. Meng Chao. Uh, Dr. Chao is a professor of systems and control with the Engineering and Technology Institute at the University of Groningen in Netherlands. And he has been there since 2008. So before this, he received his PhD degree from Yale University in 2007. And he was a postdoc at Princeton for about a year. He has received many awards, including the Manfred Thoma Medal from the International Federation of Automatic Control in 2017, and a European Control Award from the European Control Association, to name a few. He's a senior editor for Systems and Control Letters, and also an associate editor for IEEE Transactions on Automatic Control. And he has also served as the vice chair of the IFAC Technical Committee on Large-Scale Complex Systems. His main research interests are in autonomous agents, multi-agent systems, and complex networks. And he has done a lot of impressive work in consensus and opinion dynamics. And today he's going to talk about how games based on centrality measures can be useful for studying security of network cyber physical systems. So Dr. Chow, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. And the floor is all yours. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the nice introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today is my, my great pleasure to share some of our work on centrality-based zero-sum games models for security problems. The joint work with my previous postdoc, James Rio. I think for this audience here today, um, there's no need to go into the definition of cyber physical systems. We all agree that uh, we are entering a field that um, such cyber physical systems become very popular and worth a lot of research efforts. But I still want to point out a very interesting context where such cyber physical systems might show up. That is the sensing scenario. Um, so we say um, in the coming years, sensing become more personalized. And then there are also um, a, a version of the sensing um, information processing processes where crowd sensing becomes important. And the information processing is also becoming context sensitive. So all such personalized crowd and context sensing altogether give us the scenario in which um, the information, um, for example, those collected by sensors, will be propagated, will be processed by routers and processors that are everywhere around our daily life. And here is an example you can see um, which is a temperature sensor, um, but it also has the ability um, to communicate, um, to uh, talk to the router, and to organize themselves into networks. So it is an interesting observation. So now when we are talking about cyber physical systems, the physical sensors might be embedded into the activities of human individuals. So the organization of the sensors, or more generally, the organization of the physical network uh, has certain similarity 
of the organization of human networks or social networks. Uh, so then it becomes an interesting question. As the network becomes more socialized and they have certain feature of human social network, is it possible to borrow some ideas to get inspired from the research on social networks in order to study our physical uh, cyber physical systems. So you, you all know that give you a rather complex social networks. If you have certain insight into the topology of networks, uh, you can rearrange the network and identify those critical nodes or critical links uh, to gain some insight further into the network. So uh, that idea has already been tested. Um, so I'm giving an example that is the multi-hop mesh networks um, in University of California at Santa Barbara. And they have um, organized such a network um, in one of their building across different floors and try to see what are the topological features of such networks and what are the vulnerability of such networks that are different from the traditional network that we are not still not so um, understand so well. And then in such networks, they have done some work. Suppose there are attackers and there are some also some uh, defenders. And we want to know um, if we will anticipate some attacks that will make some of the nodes uh, become not to be accessible in the network. And if we have only limited resources to protect, to defend our network, uh, what is a good strategy? Uh, to defend our network. Uh, so they call how to use topological characteristics uh, for such mesh networks in order to have a smart uh, defending strategy. So that's really the starting motivating example of my talk today. Um, in fact, I will point out that there is a particularly powerful tool called centrality measure, which has been used for social networks for decades and such measures become important for the defending strategy of a um, mesh network. And such a centrality measure can be used as a utility function uh, that can be used for a network security game that some of you maybe uh, have already known this for some time. And then, um, I will go into the algorith algorithmic uh, study. Can we really come up with a good fast algorithm that can help us to, to have some defending strategies in different attacking defense strategies? And then the fast algorithm is really the keyword. So we don't want to have an algorithm that takes years to render a result. We want something that potentially can be implemented online. So fast convergence is important. And if possible, we also want the algorithm to be decentralized. So the, we don't rely on a central coordinator or server to provide all the information. Can all the sensor nodes um, in the network, they figure out what they need to do by themselves. So those are the outline of the talk today. So let's first look at what is a centrality. I gave the example of betweenness centrality. So you will see there will be different uh, type of different categories of centralities. And betweenness, um, that's one of the most popular centrality measures. So the betweenness of a node is actually computing the fraction of all the shortest paths in the network that such a node lies in. Just give you such an example. Now we see a line network of five nodes. And then we start to list all the pairwise combination um, of the starting and the finishing node, and then try to see what are the shortest paths. Because we're all, all on the line, so the shortest path will also be that one on the line. Um, and then whenever a node is on one of the shortest paths, so I'm using the blue color to indicate uh, the identified shortest path. And then um, it will count it one more. 
So now if these two nodes are on this blue shorty path, so their index becomes one. And then they're all together um, four of such um, unhop shortest paths. And then they're all together three two hop shortest paths. And there are two three hop shortest paths and one four hop shortest paths. So now if you look at all the blue colored paths, I have listed all the possible two uh, nose combinations and the corresponding shortest paths between them. And then uh, they're all together 10 such shortest paths. And we want, to, we want to look at the fraction. So we divided all those numbers by 10. So 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.4, they are the betweenness centralities of the corresponding nodes on this path. And not surprisingly, or intuitively, the node in the middle has the highest between centrality. So it tells you that this node uh, is more critical if you talk about all the pairwise communications in such a network. So I hope through this simple example, now you have some rough idea about what betweenness is. And then similarly, you can do the same counting in this Santa Barbara mesh network. And I'm using the color shades to indicate uh, the magnitude of the betweenness in such a network. And as you can see, the highest uh, betweenness um, happens in the node uh, in the lower middle. So that's 0.28. That is the highest betweenness in such a network. And if you are familiar with the social network literature, um, you or you, you have uh, read some papers from the area of complex networks, you know there are uh, all different kinds of um, betweenness uh, centralities that has been uh, uh, defined, and between is one of them. So betweenness, that is a good centrality measure that tells you how individuals might influence the flow, flow of information, um, flow of database in the network. There are also degree centrality, which tells you who are the most popular in the network. There are also closeness centrality, and that's, that can compute at some of distance, but how, tells you how fast can some influence um, propagate in the network. There's also eigenvector centrality. You look at um, the neighbor relationship that gave you a matrix, and then you look at uh, the eigenvector of the corresponding matrix that tells you a eigen, eigenvector centrality. And this is really identifying which node or which person in the network um, is most powerful in the sense to how it might mobilize the others. And then if you look into really the, uh, uh, the, the list that had percolation centrality, cross-click centrality, and so on. This is really a rich uh, work on how different centrality measures will um, characterize different physical processes, physical properties of the network. Um, so there are also visualization softwares using such centrality measures, which can uh, visualize or rearrange the network topology to make it become more meaningful um, to people. So that's like a rather quick overview about all the possible centrality measures. And in today's talk, um, I have you focus on the betweenness centrality that I have given you the example to explain. And then um, you probably have all heard about games. And we all agree that um, if you know about um, the possibilities of attacker, and then the defender will have a strategy. But if the attacker knows the defender is having a strategy, and he will innovate again to have his own attacking strategy. And this become back and forth, about, become iterative process, uh, typically used as a game. But then if we have this centrality measures as a new piece of information in mind, then um, we can formulate 
the network sec security problem as games using centrality measure as a index for utility or how successful a attacking or defending strategy becomes in terms of the centrality changes in the network before and after the attack. So in IEEE Wireless Communication Magazine, um, a couple of years ago, um, they used Santa Barbara Mesh Network as an example um, to show that um, if the attacker is smart enough, if he's not using a uh, randomized attack, um, but instead he will use some topological features like the discrete distribution, closeness, opportunity, centralities, he might be able to, when I mean, you look at the highest point in the curve, um, become more, more successful um, in attacking the network. In other words, if the attacker uh, look into the topological features of the mesh network, it is able to compute centrality measures and targeting those nodes with high centrality measures. And such attackers will be more successful. So, but on the other hand, if I am a defender, I know the attacker will look into uh, centralities. I can also define my um, defense strategy that is using such centrality measures. So this becomes a zero sum game. If the attacker wins, then the defender loses. So then they, uh, it's a zero sum because the, the payoff adds up to zero. And then, um, so this gives us a possible way to formulate a game between attacking and defending strategies in which using centrality as a measure for the performance. There are already uh, several very uh, influential, influential books uh, using game theory to study network security problems. Um, but nevertheless, there's still relatively um, few works um, that takes a topological perspective. So look into the topological features of the network. So that's why I think our work um, has some uh, value uh, and I'd like to share with you. Um, just give one slide just to recapture the zero sum game, just to put everyone on the same page. Um, you all know about this rock, paper, scissor game. So it's a typical example of zero sum game. So rock against rock, you have zero uh, reward. Um, rock is beaten by uh, paper, so that's minus one at the payoff. But rock beats scissor get one at the payoff. And um, we also know that um, so this is a payoff matrix for the role player. It tries to maximize the payoff. Um, while the column player trying to minimize the payoff if they have the um, opposite aims in such a game. And in the end, uh, it will be more beneficial to take a mixed strategy. In other words, with certain probabilities, I use rock, paper, or scissor. And here, Y1, Y2, and Y3 they are the three possibilities of probabilities of um, that the role player is uh, using uh, for his strategy. And naturally, I mean, without, even without any computation, just intuitively, it's easier to understand. Um, at the settle point, because this is a max, minim, maximization and minimization at the same time, it's a maximum operation. So you have a settle point at the equilibrium. That's also the Nash equilibrium of this game. Um, at that equilibrium, both the attacker or the role player and the, the column uh, player, they will use one third, one third, one third as their probability vector. So with equal probabilities, I will use rock, paper, or scissor. So that will be the equilibrium at which none of the two players, either uh, neither of the two players, uh, will deviate from. So that will be the equilibrium situation. Hope this uh, example um, explains what this uh, settle point equilibrium means in the zero sum game. And then the principle of difference in such a scenario is that um, there is no incentive once the players are at equilibrium 
to change to a different strategy. So there's no incentive for, for them to, to deviate. And then in our network security game um, scenario, um, what changes the payoff matrix? So it's not the rock, scissor, paper game, the, the payoff you see, but it's that um, now the payoff matrix will take all those centrality calculation results into the elements of the matrix. So here, if the attacker is attacking node one, if at the same time, the defender is also defending node one, then the attacker will gain zero payoff. But if the defender is defending a different node other than node one, the attacker will be successful now. And then um, we take minus A1. So A1 will the, be the uh, centrality of node one. So we will lose that node. And then we will also take the mag negative of that uh, centrality value as the element in the payoff matrix. So similarly, you can see, you can come up the second row and the, the nth row of the payoff matrix. You just put the corresponding uh, centrality measures into such a matrix. And as you can imagine, so again, attacker, now it's a role player, will use a mixed strategy. Uh, it's going to be a certain probability to uh, attack different nodes. And then for him, he want to um, make Y transpose A, Z. So Z will be the defend, um, defending strategy, also a, a probability vector. And this, this quadratic form gave you the payoff, the value um, for the game, given the strategy of the attacker and the defender. So at the settle point, with, that will be the, um, the value of V star, which is the optimization result of this max mean optimization process. Okay. So just to repeat myself, um, so the problem in such a network game setting is that uh, we want to compute, if we are taking the real point of defender, we want to have a optimizing defending strategy, defense strategy V star is a probability vector in which attains this V star, which is the result of this max mean uh, computation. And just some benchmark re re uh, remarks. Such a max mean uh, problem can be solved by a linear programming. So that's good news. Uh, but the bad news is that uh, it's still not sufficient, even know, knowing such a linear programming approach, um, it's not possible to practically implement it uh, fastly enough. Especially in later on when they say that uh, if the attacker can attack multiple nodes at the same time and the defender can defend multi nodes at the same time, then there's a rather large payoff matrix. The rows will be uh, all the combination of the possible attacking um, uh, combination. And then the number of, of columns will be all the number of possible combination in the defending strategy. Giving such a large matrix, right? the network can be large and then the combination can be large. Even having this linear programming approach, uh, you might not be able to practically solve it um, very fast. So um, especially if later on we talk about distributed algorithms, um, you will also encounter problems. Uh, so there's great need, right? it's really a great challenge. Um, can we have some fast algorithms try to solve the problem? Um, so of course, the, the easiest scenario if, if, is that um, if the attacker can only attack a single node, but if you have multiple nodes, then make the problem more complicated. So um, because time is short, I can only give you some key uh, thinking uh, will come up in uh, coming up with this 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 uh, algorithms. Uh, there are some key observations at those settle points. So um, it will not be smart just to defend a single node. It's better to have a probability distributed over several nodes. That's the first observation. And the second observation, uh, the support node. Those are the nodes that I want to support uh, with certain probability of defending. Uh, against the attack uh, with certain probability. Those nodes should be the nodes with higher 
centrality, the second observation. And the principle of indifference, so I, I told you about this in the um, Rock Caesar paper example. So that principle still applies uh, when we are trying to find such support nodes. And then all the other non-supporting uh, um, strategies uh, should be dominated. So that's observed from the uh, game scenario. So then uh, with those key observations, we are able to compute a, a key index called VK. So VK can be computed by the centrality and by the number of nodes you want to defend in this. And with such VK, we check an inequality. So what's the minimum number of K that you should um, give probability aligned to defend? Um, that K should satisfy such an inequality. So this gives you a, 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 an algorithm uh, try to define. So for the USSB example, right, you have centrality measure there. Um, and then you add the supporting node um, in descending order centrality. So the first one, right? so you, you, you force two, those are the, the two nodes you want to protect with certain probability, and then you compute V2. And you can compare your V2 with the node with the third highest centrality matter. And then the inequality doesn't satisfy, so you still need to protect more. You, can, you compute V3, V4, V5, and then at V5, that is the moment that um, it becomes uh, less than um, this 0.16, that centrality of this node. So you know, okay, that's the moment I need to stop. So I'd better to defend five nodes. So in fact, that will be uh, my defending strategy. With those probability indicated, the five nodes, I should, dis I should uh, spread my uh, defending resources. So the algorithm, when it finds the number of nodes you need to defend, uh, it also gives you the probability um, according to which you need to defend them. So there's a linear, uh, this order of n. So this is much, uh, the complexity is much lower than a linear programming algorithm. And then, um, so if you can um, def defend multiple nodes, and then there's similar procedure you can run over, and then our algorithm also gives you a list of, list of nodes that you can defend. And then if you have to um, take in the scenario where multiple nodes might get under attack, and then um, the algorithm become more complicated, but the key idea is that you have to redefine what you mean by between this. You have to take a pair of nodes, because the two nodes can under attack at the same time, into the definition of the between this. But similarly, you can still uh, run the algorithm, right? you can still have an index value, read, and then you can still uh, have your uh, strategy running over this. And then um, with such a scenario, you, you might not have exact solution anymore. You have to have approximate solution. Right? And then we can see that that usually behaves okay, have a rather a satisfying performance to approximate, uh, approximately uh, having the uh, accepting, accepting performance. Um, for the distributed solution, it's a much bigger story. I don't have the time to go into this, but I'd rather I want to give you some thoughts behind the design of such algorithms. To make your solution become distributed, uh, the condition is that you have to be able to compute the centrality measures distributed. That's usually very difficult to do. Um, so if you have the degree of flow or between those so centrality measures that can be computed distributively, um, and then uh, that might rely on some local estimation, so that's some consensus process procedures have to uh, go ahead in the network locally in the neighborhood. And if that is uh, can be done successfully, then similarly you can have a distributed algorithm. I do not go into the details. But then there are algorithms that you can use. Uh, you can check the inequality as before. Right? So then you can run the Serena network. In the end, you will have a strategy telling you which node you need to protect in the network. Uh, so that is the content I have covered so far. So I only have a 
25 minutes. I cannot go all into detail. I start from the centrality matter, and then I give the network formulation, and I go into the algorithms, but I didn't give you all the details of the, how the algorithm works, but I gave you um, some example um, um, in the more uh, simp simplified scenarios. So what we are currently working on, um, one is about communication. Um, if there's asynchronous procedure in the network, we all know that makes the dynamics that much more complicated and the game also become complicated. The optimization becomes uh, sometimes difficult to solve. And then uh, if the network structure changes when the agents are moving around and the policy features also change over time, that's again a challenging problem. Um, and then some more complicated attack and defense uh, models and also the game model, if about zero sum game, can we have some different games uh, to do this? So the, 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 the take home message I want to deliver today is that um, using tools from social network analysis, um, we can gain new um, insight. We have to have different perspectives to look into network security problems, which can be uh, very beneficial to study uh, cyber physical systems. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Shaw, for a very interesting talk. So we have a few questions, but uh, due to time limitations, uh, we can take only one question. So, um, so the the question is that, so if we have a network tree structure uh, from the cloud to the clients, uh, how can we mark nodes with highest betweenness centrality? Right. Uh, so indeed, um, it's not so easy. Um, to get such a centrality matters um, if you want to know it precisely. But then people talk about how to estimate um, the centralities. So if you don't know all the shortest paths, for example, but you can send sending out some, um, we call it testing uh, information and to look at what is you collected over time. And then you can have a rough estimation about um, how the nodes are critically positioned in the network um, and then you estimate the centrality matters. So if you have those estimations that can be done, um, and then you can approximately approxim applying the results in, in the work that I presented today. Okay, thank you. So uh, we'd like to thank you once again for your time and uh, uh, giving us a very interesting talk. So uh, attendees can use the emoji icons to uh, do a virtual clap for our speaker. And uh, thank you very much. Okay, so we're thanks. starting the next session with uh, Dr. Uh, Johansson in just a minute. Thank you. Thank you.